And turning to China now, friend or foe? Is it a country the U.S. loves, hates, or loves to hate? Well, right now, at least, it looks like it's trying to show some love. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates is in China right now. And, of course, Chinese President Hu Jintao is expected to be in Washington, D.C. next week. Now, while China was developing all kinds of new weapons and technologies, Robert Gates was announcing Pentagon cuts. And the Pentagon was finally accepting the reality that increases in defense spending are no longer a guarantee. So, is China as big a threat as some politicians here in the U.S. would have us believe? Well, for more journalists and Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar is talking to us from New York. Pepe, good to see you there in New York. So there's this increased panic about how China is the next big threat. All this talk about the rise of China, whether it's coming from politicians or pundits. What is this rhetoric based on, and is it justified? No, this is absolutely absurd. In fact, we should look at the question from the other side of the equation, from the Chinese point of view. For the Chinese, the Pentagon can be an extreme threat to Chinese national security, because when they look at the map of Asia, they see uh, they are more or less encircled by American troops, American weaponry on the Eastern Front, Northeast Asia, and on the Western Front as well, including Afghanistan, where, by the way, it was revealed last week by Senator Lindsey Graham that the real reason that the U.S. should be in Afghanistan is to have military bases forever. And this is something that all of us who cover Afghanistan for the past few years already knew. But now it's public and it's official. So the Chinese, whenever they meet a Pentagon official, whenever they meet, in this case, a Robert Gates, uh, they proceed with extreme caution because they know that the U.S doesn't want to leave Afghanistan. They know that the U.S. wants to keep uh, military bases in Kyrgyzstan, for instance, or eventually build a military base in Turkmenistan, so Central Asia. They know that the U.S. wants to police or keep on policing the Indian Ocean, which is strategically very important for China. So the Chinese, they tend to listen, and I'm sure they, they cannot suppress a smirk when Robert Gates says on the record, oh, we didn't know that they have a new, very powerful anti-ship missile, and they have a new, very powerful stealth fighter as well. That's what he told the Washington Post today. You mentioned the word caution. And so does China sort of have the incentive to listen to the U.S. at this point, given the political and economic realities? Exactly, because it, uh, the, the Chinese military, they proceed... Of course, they don't have the absurdly awesome budget of the Pentagon. Uh, they, uh, in fact, you have even a, a minimal parity in the U.S. They should have at least one nuclear submarine. This is not going to happen at least for the next five, six years, if not uh, 2020. So uh, jet fighters is very important for them as a dissuasive measure. Uh, these missiles, they can not only... Uh, make them in China, but also sell to potential clients all over the world, including all those African countries they do business with, or eventually Iran as well. So uh, the, pro the main problem for the Chinese military is not external. They see the Pentagon as a potential threat, of course, but basically they're what matters for them is the internal situation. They need to contain any hint of what they call subversion inside China's borders, especially Tibet and Xinjiang in uh, western China. Well, Pepe, speaking of, as you put it, this absurdly awesome uh, military budget, Robert Gates is actually proposing $78 billion in defense cuts um, over the next five years. But, of course, this has prompted opposition from uh, certain politicians. And, you know, earlier today I actually interviewed uh, former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton, and I asked him about these cuts. Listen to what he said. I think the administration badly uh, misestimates the uh, threats to the United States around the world. I think the recent budget cuts that Secretary Gates has announced uh, will go down as one of the biggest mistakes uh, he has made during his tenure. Uh, I think the entire course the administration is taking on the defense budget is wrong. So let's get to the bottom of this. I mean, what really is the issue here? Is China sort of used as a scapegoat to try to, you know, justify maintaining military supremacy and this bloated budget? You, you nail it. That's exactly the point. Uh, for any American constituency, for congressmen, for people, you know, uh, who control states where the Pentagon has contractors 
that you know supply thousands of jobs, uh, whatever, be it in North Carolina, Arizona, Texas, or wherever. Of course, uh, cutting the Pentagon budget means cutting jobs potentially, not necessarily because this, these jobs can be transferred to another project, and obviously blaming China. But the threat from China is not from the People's Liberation Army, the PLA. The threat from China is economic. Like every economist you talk to in Washington nowadays is saying, the yuan soon is going to be <laughs> the, the actual currency of the world, maybe by 2020. So the economic policy of Washington should lead and not the Pentagon. It's really interesting that you say that because the discussion that, that we hear a lot here in the United States is sort of blaming China and the Chinese people for stealing our jobs. There's very little discussion about how the American corporations obviously are shipping these jobs overseas because it's cheaper for them and they get more of a profit. You're absolutely right because the whole phenomenon of the deindustrialization of America is at the heart of the American economic malaise nowadays. But you will never see a discussion under these lines in mainstream media, corporate media, or the big networks. Well, especially because of most of these corporations, they are advertisers in mainstream media and, uh, network co and, and the corporate networks. So obviously you cannot attack them right away. But they are delocalizing jobs from the US, not only to China, but to Southeast Asia, to Indonesia, to Malaysia, Thailand, to Africa. So uh, for, for the, the American uh, working class and the American middle class, the prospects are absolutely bleak. And this has absolutely nothing to do with a threat from abroad. In fact, the threat is internal. And major corporations can be regarded as the real culprit. That's a very interesting point. Journalist and Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar. Always such an interesting conversation with you, Pepe. Thanks.